So, I have a couple of friends in particular who are excited for me to get through alien isolation, but then this happened. I started off and, hmm, feels about right, uh, it looks about right, well, there's a lot more to do in the training courses nowadays, uh, I just hope they don't screw this over by adding a whole bunch of explosions. Oh hey, the cargo ship training course, I remember getting better times than that. Yep, everything feels right now. From this point on, I was in. I proceeded through the rest of the campaign in 8 hours, earning almost all the achievements, remembering exactly where each piece of intel was, exactly how to chase certain levels on veteran, and I remembered how great the single player campaign of the game actually is. But why? Why is the campaign of this game so great that it not only made massive ripples upon release, but holds up to this day as an enjoyable experience that doesn't feel too aged? With the release of Red Dead Redemption 2, there was a spark to the discussion of whether or not video games could be considered art. When it comes to Call of Duty 4, it doesn't look like art from first glance. It looks like a game full of manly men, and one woman, doing manly things. There appears to be no depth or reason, just a roller coaster loaded with explosives. However, one of the first things that stuck out to me as the game proceeded onward was just how much downtime there was. The game actually takes its time on multiple occasions, which works out vastly in its favor. So now that we've established that Call of Duty 4 isn't just a roller coaster of explosions, it's time to discuss why this game seems to stand the test of time, almost like a piece of art. All pieces of art, whether books, films, or even still media, have to meet a few criteria, execution, substance, and timing. I'm not going to get into that third one, timing, too much, as oftentimes, art is released with incorrect timing, only to be appreciated later. Art can be art without having to have good timing. But timing is what allows art to become popular. What I want to discuss in this video is execution and substance. Execution, as it relates to art, is the ability to convey, the evident skill of the artist, or the way in which the media is portrayed. Substance, as it relates to art, is the subject, the plot, or summed up, the content of the media. Take a look at Pablo Picasso's Fruit Bowl with Fruit, painted in 1918. The substance of the painting is simple, fruit. Meanwhile, the execution of the painting is astounding. Each individual shade, shadow, and detail of the objects in the scene are meticulously represented, and it's evident that the painter had the skill to pull off the act. While the substance of the painting may not be exciting, the execution is. Another example would be Claude Monet's Parliament paintings. The substance is intriguing, the same building throughout multiple times of the year, times of day, and different atmospheric conditions. However, the execution will grab some who appreciate Impressionism, but maybe not the people who are realism fanatics. That is the difference between substance and execution. To give an example of substance and execution in video games, one could look at Age of Wonders 3 vs The Division 2. In The Division 2, I was slogging through the story, motivated by the execution, or the gameplay and action. In Age of Wonders, I was slogging through the execution, or the gameplay, motivated by the substance, the compelling tale of elves versus humans and the shadow worshippers in between. But what about Modern Warfare? Modern Warfare's substance is a modern military story surrounding nuclear weapons, special forces, and modern conflict in the Middle East. Its execution, its graphics, its gameplay, its tone, its plot is astounding. Let's begin with the substance, the story. The substance of Modern Warfare was very timely indeed. In our world today, we are still afraid of nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons have given the humans ability to do something that is never before seen in history. We can end the world. This power naturally comes with the fear of other men as well as precision in our handling of these weapons. Modern Warfare dared to ask the question, what happens when humans are careless with these weapons? Throughout the story, we see multiple instances of these weapons being mishandled. First, a smuggled nuclear device on a tanker. Second, a nuclear device detonating within the heart of a world conflict. Third, the after effects of carelessness and instability when relating to nuclear energy. And fourth, the assault and takeover of a nuclear base resulting in the launch of 12 nuclear missiles. The theme of Call of Duty 4 is evident. We should be much more careful on how we handle nuclear weapons. Other games, such as the great campaign of Battlefield 3, have also taken this subject head on. 
What happens when nuclear material is mishandled? What happens to the men in between the conflict and the weapon? Should these weapons exist at all? Thus, a compelling substance is formed. It's a hook, a grabber, something to pull in the general audience. Sure, it's a different audience than a play whose substance is that of a malformed man falling in love with an opera singer, or aliens coming to Earth to teach us a language, or a pregnant woman trying to prove her husband's innocence, but it's still an audience. An audience that will pay money, which provides better execution. Different substances appeal to different people. However, in video games, the substance that Modern Warfare provided was almost revolutionary. It wasn't something we'd seen in games at that time. But, as countless 80s B-movies have proven, an intriguing substance is only as good as its execution. So how does Modern Warfare execute its plot? There is one tried and true theory within plot writing, and that is of rising action. The theory is that one starts a book off with an intriguing introduction, then slowly raises intensity and intrigue until it inevitably reaches a breaking point, also known as the climax. The climax is where the detective chases the murderer, the spies save the world, or the lovers overcome conflict and realize they're meant to be together. The climax is the high point, the thrill of the plot. The intensity naturally drops after a good climax into a swift, satisfying resolution. A good example of this is the Lord of the Rings movies. We're introduced to the ring and its corrupting power, then to the Fellowship. From there we hear of orc movements and battles that collide at Helm's Deep, setting off an epic stage. From there we hear that the Lich Kings are moving on a massive human settlement of Minas Tirith, which our characters must recruit dead in order to win that battle. Meanwhile, our hobbits near Mordor, overcoming more stressful obstacles as they do. Finally, our hobbits reach Mount Doom and must fight Golem in order to destroy the ring at the exact same time as Aragorn heads his humanity stand against the entirety of Mordor. All four eagles to carry the protagonist home, Aragorn is crowned and Frodo says goodbye. Notice how much shorter the resolution is than the rest of the plot? This is where Modern Warfare took its execution in a bold new way. You were probably wondering when I was going to mention it. The nuke scene. Test teams are on site and attempting to disarm. I repeat, we have a confirmed nuke. The nuke scene in Modern Warfare shocked anyone who played it. Even on my 30th run through, I was still excited to see it. It's a foreshadowed spectacle that made for the campaign's triumph, but also the series undoing. More on that later. One thing that made the nuke so shocking was just how early on it came, at the end of Act 1. That's a third of the way through the game, and we're experiencing what should be a climax. However, it was a smart move. Because they added an event rivaling a climax that early in the game, it added a hook to incentivize the player to continue to the end. Not only that, but being so early, it added shock value, which increased reaction and general murmurings among the fans. Almost everyone remembers that scene in particular. Modern Warfare isn't the only piece of media that's managed to pull off this feat. Take the Harry Potter movies, for example. I read the books once in elementary school and can't remember, so this will just be the movies. In the first few movies, each have had their own climaxes with rivaling intensity. Things keep building, the kids are forced to mature, we learn the characters, but all in all, it's just an introduction to what the world is capable of. Enter Book 4. In Book 4, the stakes turn deadly. We get our first major character death, we get our first look at dragons, and Hogwarts just feels so much more mature. It's a shocking change, one foreshadowed by the tone of the third movie, but still a shock nonetheless. Especially the ending. As Voldemort returns in his full form and duels Harry, it's by far the biggest thing we've seen in the movies yet. We have yet to fully view Voldemort, and now he's returned in all his glory, and he's dueling Harry, and we have our actual first wizard death. It may not be a nuke, but it was equally shocking to Harry Potter fans. It kept people watching. Had the movies just kept building the return of Voldemort, saving it for the last entry, a lot of audiences would have been lost during the journey. However, by having that shock and return just before halfway through the series, we were hooked further. It essentially allowed J.K. Rowling to hit the reset button on the intensity of the books and create a new rising action to a new climax. Before she was teasing the return of Voldemort, now she is teasing the Battle of Hogwarts. Modern Warfare took advantage of its nuke in the most perfect way possible, by resetting the rising action. 
Immediately after the mission, we're assaulting a small village. This feels so much smaller than the city we were just in, but that's okay. Almost immediately after the nuke, we've already killed the man responsible, only to find out that there was one above him, Imram Zakaev. This takes us to Chernobyl, a mission we can fully complete with only killing 5 souls. That's much less compared to the hundreds of lives we've taken thus far. However, the stakes are heightened by the next mission where we take a shot and make a stand as we wait for a chopper. The stakes are further heightened by the next mission where we have to hold back an enemy assault before making our way back through those enemies to get to the new LZ. After that, the stakes are even further pressed with a wild ambush and a chase through a Russian town. Oh, remember that nuke? Now there's 12, and you have 9 minutes to defuse them. The climax in the game is not the nuke, nor the 12 for that matter. The nuke is a giant explosion, a great spectacle for sure. However, the time before the nuke allowed you to bond with your team, to get to know Captain Price, Gaz, Griffin, Sergeant Griggs. The climax is holding out on a collapsing bridge, watching your friends die. The climax is a pistol sliding toward you. The climax is taking the shot. And the resolution? The resolution is being carried up to a helicopter via stretcher while a news broadcast plays, recounting the world peace you've managed to maintain. J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter are known for their characters. Everyone remembers Neville Longbottom, the Weasleys, and everyone in between. In that time between the two climaxes, we got to know the true personality of many of these characters because they were reacting to the first climax, which made the final battle more rewarding as we went in with actual stakes. In Modern Warfare, the downtime between the nuke and the bridge allowed us to attach and to grab hold of Price, Gaz, Griggs, Kamarov, all names I remember. This is what made Modern Warfare work, as well as what led to the series undoing. Because so many people reacted to the nuke, gaming companies in general assumed that big set pieces and explosions were the way to go. This caused a chart that looked like this, to suddenly look like this. What wasn't realized is that when the audience sees nothing but linked explosions, the characters get lost in the fray. And that is why Modern Warfare's story still holds up today. We may all remember the nuke, but the lasting impact was our team. The downtime in between the two climaxes, the build up, the quiet, the frantic races, the in-between missions of saving the world. That is why Modern Warfare tends to stand the test of time, why its story is still pleasant to play. The plot was executed near flawlessly, and the gameplay encouraged addiction, and the execution built upon its substance rather than rivaling it. That is why when Modern Warfare came out, it was the pinnacle of its genre. Granted, the Bioshock series has come about since then and perfected the first person shooter, but Modern Warfare is still the best telling of a nuclear, modern military story, and that's why it deserves an A+. Thanks for watching for my 8 subscribers. I do actually plan on making it through Alien Isolation. I just knew I had to do this video first or else I wouldn't be giving Alien a proper chance, as I'd just be rushing through it to get to this. I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope to be able to be doing a lot more stuff like this in the future. I actually have an idea with Alien Isolation, so we'll see what comes about. Once again, thank you, and goodbye.